Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So I thought I'd give you guys a bit of a detailed look at my polishing trolley today. So I do a lot of polishing at this workshop here. It's just part of the job because we do go above and beyond with, uh, pretty much every stage of the job. So I thought I'll give you guys a look at my polishing trolley. So originally I actually wasn't sure whether or not I was going to turn this cart into a prep cart or a polishing cart. So that's why I sort of held off for the first week or two even bringing it in as it turned out i do more polishing here than i do prep work that's just how it is i'm actually lucky that i got to the point where i enjoy polishing so i went down a bit of a rabbit hole it actually all started with using the sonax branded polishers that i got off my uncle and i got right into the, the detailing side of things and even just keeping my car a little bit cleaner so um, that led me down the path of getting some extra tools and really stepping up my game. It's funny how, like, if you had have asked me like a year ago, I would have said, yeah, like, I'm pretty good at polishing. But now I, I would say I wasn't that good at polishing a year ago. So um, I guess as much as anything, that just uh, goes to show that you have to keep an open mind with what you think you know. Um, your whole worldview can be shattered um, if you do actually have an open mind and that's what enables us to grow as a person um, like I've done it before in the past like um, had such a closed mind that I would argue the point even when you you know you're wrong and like I see some people doing it and it actually makes you look like more of an idiot um, if you can't even admit that there's some new technology or there's a different way of doing it even if it does uh, get you with a very similar result. It doesn't even always have to be better. There can just be a different way around doing things um, That get the same results or get as good results um, So all of that aside, let's have a look at what I've got on my polishing cart and another thing I would actually like to say uh, before we get into it is um, like the way I do things has been changing quite rapidly like the way I do things today compared to the way I was doing things in polishing like last week has already changed, you know, like I've actually done a couple of videos that I had to scrap because looking back on the footage, I'm like, oh, I don't do that anymore and I wouldn't do that anymore. Um, it seems dated and, and that was literally like only a month old footage. Um, yeah, so things do, uh, for me anyway, in, in this scene, the polishing scene, do change rapidly and as I say, like there's no right or wrong way at the end of the day, if you're getting the results that you're happy with, you do it. I mean, some people like to sort of stick to one brand and I can definitely see there's some logic behind that. Um, but another thing worth mentioning is like, we can all go on about how good these um, compounds and polishes are, but having the right pad is also very important and having a nice clean pad. That's one thing that I do now that I never used to, always clean my pads out at the end of each polishing session and also keeping the pads clean halfway through a big polishing session so what i've been doing before lunch is this aston martin here so as you can see i've got it up on this four poster hoist i had that right up in the air before lunch and what i did i um because these these cars here are actually buffed back flat so they're sprayed and then they're sanded back flat and then buffed up um so there's no orange peel in them um so i did all the lower sections and what i ended up having to do is um, halfway through buffing I had to get the blower onto that and remove all the the compound and the clear coat that had built it up in it because um, as you're polishing you're removing a slight amount of clear from the car you're then revealing the deeper layers and you're getting that shine out of it so um, as you build that uh, pad up with clear coat you, you sort of lose part of that cutting capabilities of the pad and the compound as well so um, that aside, um, yeah, like the basic idea of polishing is it's it's not that much different than um, sanding stages that we do when we're prepping our cars up. It's literally just going through the grades um, until you go, like you start off course. So that's what we'll do. Like when I sanded this car down, I started with um, 1,500 or 1,500. I then went up to 3,000 with the orbital. So that's the sanding stage done. And then when we get to our compound, like the compound might be say, um, 4,000 um, and then the next one will be equivalent to say 5,000 and you, you're literally just going up and up finer and finer um, each stage. That aside, that's the basic idea 
of polishing and what we're doing when we're polishing because I do know that like I've got some people that really don't know that much about the polishing and I, I do know that some people watch my videos who really don't quite understand it so um, as my dad said if you can't explain something um, simply and in an easy to understand language then you probably don't understand it very well yourself so as I say like it's really not that um, it's not rocket science what's going on here we're just literally just going higher and higher through the grades this is where it started my journey of cordless technology so this thing here is a orbital flex <clears throat> is the orbital polisher a great little tool this thing is nice and lightweight as you can see I can hold it up with one hand quite comfortably nice and powerful and it holds quite a nice amount of battery power in it so it's a it's a five amp power battery and that will last for about 40 to 45 minutes i found um and the charge time is actually the same as the discharge time um so this is basically like the finishing the, the last step that you're going to do is with this orbital so the idea of that is that like so these this is this is a rotary mini polisher i've also got a rotary where is it yeah i've also got a rotary large polisher so what will happen with these ones is they're they're going to be a lot coarser these are for the cutting stages um and then they will actually end up sometimes leaving you with some swells because that's literally all they do they go around in circles um, but then what this does is because it's on an orbit it sort of cuts across those swells so that you'll actually remove those big swell marks which you can sometimes see if you're not careful with these um, well you definitely will see it with the coarser stages so what I'll do is I'll start off with these green pads. I'm a big fan of the, the 3M Quick Connect um, pads. So you can get these in uh, three different um, grades. So again, the, the coarseness of the foam makes a big difference. So this is the coarsest one. Um, the second one here is a black one. This is a little bit finer and softer. And then there's actually another one here, which is even finer again. That's the last step. That's the ultra fine. Um, which actually has it, its own polish. So each of these steps actually do have their own polish to go with them. Um, I have found you can do a little bit of mixing and matching. So what I've been doing these days, and as I say, like yesterday um, compared to today, I actually am doing things different. I got myself, I found this stuff here in the cupboard there. Sean, actually the painter you may have seen in a couple of my other videos, he got me onto this stuff and it is amazing. It's like a really, really coarse compound. So. Um, the clear coat that we're using here is um, Performance Pro Clear. Now, the thing about that clear is that it goes really, really hard. So, like, you can bake it for, say, an hour, and it will basically be fully cured. So, it, it goes in one hour to the, the level that most clears take a month to get to. Um, so, it really is quite a unique clear. I've never used any other clear that's quite like it, um, but those who understand paint, will know that the harder the paint is or the um, the more that it's uh, time that it's had to cure or fully cured paint will be a, a lot harder to buff up so what i was finding previously is that i was using my 3000 grits and then i was using this shoal stuff uh, and to be fair i used pretty much every compound but what i was getting is um denig marks coming back so like the the oils and the greases inside the compounds would fill it in, make it look polished, but then the next day you would find that those marks would come back. Um, so basically I have found that using this one here has pretty much eliminated that. I've actually found that using this stuff here, even on this very hard clear, um, you can just go 2000 grit. I've found I don't even need to go to the 3000 grit. Now on a car like this, I'm still going to the 3000 grit. Um, but I'm still using that as my ultra coarse um, initial cut. Um, and then what I'll do is I'm actually going to this one here. So that's the Sonax Ultimate Cut. Um, this is a pretty good one. It's a good sort of medium, medium grade cut. So I've found it a little bit, um, same thing, like a little bit fine for, for this ultra hard clear. Um, but as I say, like I've, I've pretty much used all of the uh, cutting compounds I could get my hands on this ultra hard clear and this is the only one that I've found is really actually good for it and reliably get rid of those sanding scratches um, so yeah that's the 3M marine compound and finishing material so I'll start off with that 
on the green pad. I'll then go with this one on the green pad. So that's the, the next step down in the grades. So that's a little bit finer than this marine compound. And again, I'll use that same pad, but I'll probably just flip it up to the other side or at the very least blow um, all of this compound or at least most of that compound out. My next step will be this one here. So this is one that I've actually been very impressed with, the Shoal S30 Premium Swirl Remover. This stuff is actually really good as like a single step. So I've found that I can even just um, use that as a bit of a rejuvenator. But what I'll do, I'll start off with, uh, so first step, second step, third step, but I'll use this on the rotary because the rotaries are a little bit more aggressive. So that will sort of get rid of most of the swirls. But then I'll use that same compound with this here um, orbital polisher as the very final step. Um, so yeah, I've been finding that to be work, working very, very well. And as you can see here, I'm, I'm working on some pretty expensive cars. So, you know, you have to have a pretty solid method because if it's not, it's not a good method, you'll be doing it again and again and again until it's right. And like basically, I'm at the point now um, that I don't even need to take my cars out into the sun to check for swirls. Like I know that I've got a, a solid enough uh, procedure that they won't have swirls when I get out there in the sun. Another thing is using this LED headlight here. So I'll put that on my head and this is like a 1000 lumen ultra bright LED light. So that will show me any DNIB marks that I've missed. It'll show any minor scratches and um, it's actually really quite good. So what you can see here is I've actually, I've cut this back flat. So that and that, the finish on that and that should match now. As I say, I, I did that when it was up in the air. Um, I actually used that Shoal S30 on the roops, oh sorry, the flex machine I've got there, the cordless flex machine. I used that one down the entire side here because there was a couple of um, PDR spots that they did here. So what they did is they just pushed up some, might have been some dents there and the PDR guys flipped up them dents. So I gave that a little bit of a buff and then gave the entire side just a bit, bit of a rejuvenator with that Shoal S30 and the flex machine. And as you can see, it's really brought it up nice and glossy in a single step. So, and, and it wipes off. So if you, you can see there, like I did miss a little bit of compound, but it wipes off nice and easy. Um, apart from that, there are a few things that I don't actually own myself. Um, so this orbital sander is not actually mine. I'm, I'm borrowing that from the workshop. Um, that's what I use the 3000 grit on. And they've also got this uh, smaller 75 mil orbit um, mini sander. So these are good for just doing like single D nibs and stuff like that. Um, that's pretty handy for the 3000 grit. This is actually some alcohol based cleaner so what this does is it will pull out all of the greases from the sanding scratches so um, like as I was saying before is that you, you get some sort of greases and, and fillers like they call it um, that will go inside the sanding scratches and make it look buff but then it won't be so what this alcohol will actually sort of draw out those greases from the sanding scratches so that you can actually inspect it and make sure that you haven't missed any sanding scratches so that's a handy one to have uh, apart from that i've got my little detailing block set so these are like the extension to the splines so malamotive make these and they're actually pretty cool so apart from that i've got some masking tape on the side there i've got a couple of little sample bottles like i'll use these if i ever get cold downstairs and i'll just go one two three grab a couple of those with the mini polisher most of the time the mini mini polisher is what i need um, I'll take them downstairs and just do a little bit of a zip zip on, on a spot if I ever do get cold down but that doesn't happen very often, it's only been once so far so just take that little awesome mini polisher there, that's the Milwaukee one. I've got these here, um, <clears throat> to get into this it cost me about $1100 but as I say I did end up getting myself a drill and an impact driver and the uh, battery charger as well but very handy tool to have. I've found here, like I use it, I'm, I've, I've been using it all morning on this one here. And um, now the, the recharge time is about 40 minutes, but the discharge time is about 20 minutes. So you, you could possibly run into some issues there if you did need to use it constantly. But what I've found is that I'm not using it constantly. Like um, I'll do a bit, a bit with this, zip, zip, zip. But then I might be doing like a lot of, I've actually been doing a lot of work with this because you really got to get into 
all these smaller sections with that um, smaller buff. I've found that I haven't actually been running out of batteries even with this cordless one. And I mean, look, going into it, I originally didn't trust cordless tech. So I, I was actually speaking to Spray Guns Direct, which is where I got this one here. So this is the first cordless um, tool that I got. Um, and I, I still look back at some of those emails. I had a look back because I needed to find some information and I was still looking like I said like four or five times that I didn't want that I wanted the corded version because I didn't trust cordless tech um, and I'm glad they did talk me into it because I've gone all out on the cordless stuff it's one of those things that now I'm at the point you like you could say oh what about the batteries they only last for a certain amount of time like you might get 700 cycles out of them or whatever I'm at the point now where they're so convenient that I don't care. I'll, I'll happily buy another battery in a year or two, if that's what it comes to. So as always, when I do a video like this, I forgot to mention something, and this time it was the sandpapers. Apart from that, I think I did cover most of it. I think it's very important to have a wide selection of sandpapers. I may not use some of them as often as the others, but they still all have their place. So I've got everything from 800 to 1000 grit. There are a couple of the ones that don't get used that often, but they still do have their place. I've then got 1500, 2000 by hand, and then we've got the 3000 grit, but they're for the orbital sounders. So we've got the, the large ones and also the 75 mil ones. So in the future, I would actually like to introduce the 5000, at, at least 5000 and maybe the 8000 into this workshop so we can spend less time buffing and like a little bit more time sanding and you may actually be surprised at how cheap some of those um, fancy sandpapers are like the 5000 because I was looking on a website the other day and they had a box of 15 5000 grits the 75 mil ones for $44 so I was surprised at how cheap they are so I might have to get some in for a bit of a, a demo to show the current boss and uh, show him the benefits of them and yeah, the fact that you spend less time with a buff in your hands and it can actually make for a better job too, less chance of missing your DNIB marks. But all that aside, I thought I'd just do this video so that I could familiarize you guys with my tools and equipment and my polishing cut because we do actually have a full polishing video coming up on that Aston Martin DBS that you see on screen now. Until then, get out there and paint some shit. Coming out. I'd like to say a big thanks to everyone for watching and if you'd like to support the channel further you're more than welcome to go over and check out some of the merchandise we've got. My personal favourite is those spray suits so they're a good quality collab branded spray suit with a gunman logo on it. There's also hats, drink coolers, hoodies and t-shirts so be sure to go over and check out the link in the description if you are interested.